Hey guys, Chinese New Year's coming up and I have a very special announcement because for the next 72 hours, I'm releasing a new merch drop that is Chinese New Year themed. It's the Year of the Dragon and I've got the Luckbox version and I'm super happy with how this looks. It comes in white, but I really like how the gold pops off on the red. It's very Chinese themed. I've always wanted to do something that kind of celebrated the culture and heritage that I'm from. And I finally got a chance to do that this year. Also got the uh, R patch on the sleeve here. And it just looks really good. I'm really happy with how this all turned out. I worked a while to get this design made. And I wanted something that I would be proud of as an actual Chinese person wearing some sort of Chinese New Year merch. So super happy with how this turned out. It comes in white and red and the merch drop is only available for 72 hours. Big thank you to everybody who purchased the merch drop last time where the lockbox ended up selling out in 30 hours. So uh, with all of these merch drops, I've always wanted to give back in one way or another. You know, last drop, I gave away the first Rolex I ever purchased. And this time I wanna do something fun as well. As someone who makes these merch drops, I wanna give a fun sweat to one lucky person who buys one of the merch. I mean, of course, you guys support me and I wanna do everything I can to support you guys back. So I'm giving away a one ounce gold rampage coin. One new thing about this merch drop is I'm actually adding a high ticket item to the list of items being sold here. So we're actually including a $500 gold coin, similar to like a replica of the giveaway coin. The giveaway coin is a one ounce, 24 karat, 100% gold coin that's stamped with the rampage logo. The high ticket item is a $500 item that is about three or four grams of gold. So it's gonna be the same size, but just a little bit less weight and of course less purity in the gold there. But if you wanna grab that, I'm super excited to be able to uh, launch something cool and a whole new product that I have never really dabbled in. So be able to sell like a gold coin that's commemorated with the Rampage logo, I think is pretty sick. So if you're interested in that, that's also available, but obviously, it's like three or four grams of gold versus the giveaway item, which is a whole ounce, 24 karat worth of gold. I appreciate you guys for all the support and the drop is live for only 72 hours, rampagepokestore.com. And let's get to the video. What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. I'm a little late right now. We're at the Wynn Ballroom and right there, we're playing a live stream. We're playing 100, 200. I have my buy-in and chips with me. Like I said, I'm late. Unfortunately, I ran into technical difficulties, but whatever. It was a 100, 200. That's why we uh, came here to, main, the main reason why we're here in Vegas. Uh, obviously, tournaments are sick. What a sick backdrop. And here we go, back on the live stream. Much bigger game today, buying it for 500,000. Let's get it going. We are here to play some high stakes cash games. Thank you to WPT and WPT Global for hosting this and putting this together. We're playing 100, 200. I am in for lots and lots of money in front of me. So uh, let's get into battling right off the bat. About five minutes into the session. Oh boy, fireworks start because I put on the $400 straddle under the gun. I get the cutoff to call. Small blind calls and the big blind raises to 2,000. Here, I decide to call with fives. You know, what else am I going to do? I have a pair, let's go set mining. Then the cutoff who limped puts in a three bet to 10K. Action folds to me. This opponent has about 50,000 in his stack. I think the graphics are a little bit wrong. So am I gonna call 10K? No. Am I gonna fold? Probably I should be, but I'm all in because I'm here to gamble and let's run it up. And he snap calls because he has a good hand. And just like that, we're playing over a $100,000 pots, and I am not in very good shape. He shows he has pocket queens. I show 1-5. We're going to run it twice. And the first run out gives me a little bit of hope on the turn with a gut shot. River brick. All right. One down. Another one to go. Flop is absolutely not going to help me. And I'm going to lose both of these runouts. Stuck over 50k to start the night. Nice hand to Don for his pocket queens. So uh, I'm stuck 50k right off the bat. But we're going to try to climb out of this hole. Because we have the whole rest of the stream to play some cards. Next hand, I pick up ace three of diamonds in the cutoff. Raise it up to $600. Get the button to three bet me to 2000 and then the big blind makes the call of this 2000, and that's gonna incentivize me to spice things up. I decide to four bet to $7,000, and action is going to fold to the big blind player. Who makes the call? Interesting situation here. I'm not loving this spot. I get the three better out of the way, but the caller who's in, out of position, ah, I can't beat this guy, Don. Anyways, heads up to a flop we go of 10, 8, 7, two clubs. He checks over to me here, and on this board, I actually think 
Don's going to hit this a lot of the time. He has lots of sets. He can have over pairs, stuff like that, and ace three not doing very hot. So I check this one back, and we see the turn ace of spades, which is awesome. Anyways, he checks it to me once again, and with such a bad kicker, I decided to play this a little bit more cautiously and slow things down. Don't need to start putting lots of money in the middle with a weak top pair. Anyways, I check this back, and the reverse comes the jack of diamonds, four line to a straight, lots of sets, lots of two pairs. I don't have a whole lot. Actually, going to go check, check, and I'm quite glad that I did because he has ace king. Lose another hand to this guy, give him more, more money that he doesn't need, but here I am. Down about 60,000 now after two hands to start the night. Clearly things aren't necessarily going my way, but we're going to try to battle back with Jack-5 of hearts. That's a premium hand in the cutoff. Raise up to 600 and I get the small blind to call. Going to a flop, which comes King-9-6 to hearts. This time I have a flush draw. That's more than I've ever had all day. Anyways, he checks it over to me and I throw out a thousand bucks into the middle and he makes the call. Turn comes aboard pairing nine. I don't love to see this. Action's gonna go check, check because I don't want to put money in the middle. Middle card paired. I have a flush draw. Let's see a free river, please. And it's the six of spades. My opponent reaches for chips and I don't even know how much he's betting because I'm folding my board. I'm literally playing the board. I have nothing going for me. So... I'm going to just surrender this one and let it go. My opponent takes down a 5k pot with top pair. Moving right along, this next hand gets a little bit spicy because I pick up a good hand this time. Ace, queen of diamonds, probably the best hand I've seen all day. I raise it up to 600 bucks from the hijack and I get the button to three bet me to 1800. Shout out to Yo Viral here who made the trip. Also a fun guy to play with and hang out with. Here I am trying to raise it up against my buddy here. Knowing my opponent is very capable of three betting light and we're playing super deep stacked. I think a suited ace queen is good enough for a four bet. So I decided to make it $6,500. And for 6,500, Yo is definitely not one to back down. Definitely not scared money. He comes along for a call. Going heads up to a flop, out of position, and it comes Queen Jack 10 to diamonds. Here, wow, what a spot. Uh, lots of things happening. I mean, obviously very connected to board, but I have top pair, top kicker. I have obviously a royal flush draw. I have a straight draw. I have lots of things happening. And also, I think I have the ace king advantage. Also, I might have the set advantage as well. Lots of things happening. Overall, I think the board is really good for me, although a little bit scary because my opponent can have a really strong hand as well. But I decided to start off with a bet of $4,000 here, sizing up just a little bit here out of position. And my opponent makes the call, which we're going to hope to improve. Turn comes a brick here, still out of position against Yo here. And with my specific hand, I feel like this hand can just check a lot of the time. Um, not really sure how I feel about this specific situation because one pair here on this board is kind of dicey and scary. So um, here out of position, I decided to exercise a little bit of discipline and check. And luckily, my opponent checks this one back. So we're going to go to river, which comes a jack. Flush draw misses, but luckily I still have a pair. Anyways, I feel like it's a little bit of a dicey situation to go for value because it's going super thin. So I decided to check this one to Yo here. He thinks about it for a while and ends up firing out a $7,000 bet. Pretty small bet in this pot right now. So with one pair, I don't necessarily love this situation, but I'm definitely not going to go anywhere. I decided to call the 7K with top pair, top kicker, and he shows the five, six of diamonds, and I'm going to win this one. Luckily for Yo that the last diamond didn't come because he certainly would have lost a lot more money here, but it's always nice to scoop the first win of the day. Finally, about an hour and a half into the stream, we're moving right along into another fun hand to play. I have queen jack of hearts in the small blind, cut off raises 600, I three bet to 2,500, and cutoff makes the call. Going heads up, the flop is jack five deuce to spades. And here, hitting top pair, gotta love the situation. I decide with a continuation bet of $2,200. And my opponent makes the call, so gotta love this spot with top pair. Things are going very smoothly before the turn comes the board pair in deuce. Not a card that I'm quite scared of, to be honest. I don't think it changes a whole lot. I don't think anyone really has a deuce here ever. So I'm gonna continue betting for value with top pair. I size to $6,000. 
And when my opponent makes the call with about 20K behind, it's about a pot-sized bet left. What do we wanna do when the river is the five of clubs? So double paired board, I kind of feel indifferent about my specific spots. Uh, I think my jack with a queen kicker isn't necessarily strong enough to go for three shoots of value, especially betting so much a pot sized bet on the river here. So I decided to check, maybe let some of his missed spades bluff or other random cards that he doesn't think is the winner. But it quickly goes check, check, and I show and win against his pocket tens. So always nice to win another pot. We're stringing along a nice little win streak here. After that last hand, we go into a little bit of card death. Nothing crazy happens for the next hour and a half before this one. Picking up pocket eights in the hijack, we're playing the stand-up game, and there's an unknown player who limps for $200. Get another player from early position to limp in, and here raising things up to 1,000 bucks with a pair. A pretty decent pair, average pair, nothing crazy here. But what happens next is that the small blind, who's playing a pretty deep stack of over 100K, three bets to $4,000, this same guy that I keep doubling up and giving him money. And anyways, I call for $3,000 more. Going heads up to a flop of 764 rainbow. My opponent throws out a bet of $3,000. A little bit of a large bet in my opinion. And here, I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere with pocket eights. Obviously have an overpair, I have a straight draw, I have other possibilities here that maybe I could bluff with pocket eights. But for now, I'm going to make the call, and we're going to see his turn, which is the four of spades. Brings it back to a flush draw, and now my opponent starts to slow down and check. I don't think my hand is worth betting here. I imagine he has some over pairs that might want to check sometimes, and pocket eights doesn't seem super strong to bet again. So I check back, and we're going to go see a river, which comes another four. So now it trips on the board, giving my pair in my hand a full house. And my opponent now throws out a bet of $5,000. Considering the size of the pot, this is a very, very small bet. And I, I don't think I can ever fold for such a good price. Although I don't love the situation because it is Don and he doesn't play too many hands here. And uh, of course, my instincts were right because my Don shows pocket tens when I snap call pain. This is when I'm not very happy with myself. I had this internal discussion where I felt like I'm never winning here <laughs> on the river when I call the 5K. But... Given the price, I couldn't help myself, and here I am. I have the loser, and I give Don more and more money until here. I pick up pocket eights once again. The $400 straddle is on, and I want to make a stand. Early business player, Don, limps in for 400 bucks. Cut off, limps in, calls the 400 as well, and I'm in out of position here in one of the blinds with pocket eights yet again. It failed me the first time. Dear God, please don't fail me now. I raise it up to 2,500 because... That seems like a good size and kind of want to price out the imposition player callers. But of course, Don, he's sitting on piles of money. He has won every single hand against me so far tonight. He's not going to go anywhere. He makes the call. We're going to go heads up to a flop, which comes King 10-8. Bink City, baby. Let's freaking go. We've waited all night. In my position, I don't know what Don has. You guys already see it. But here, I'm just praying that Don has anything that connected with the board because I've been waiting all night to finally win a big pot and get my money back. I bet $4,000 to start things off with bottom set. And as I'm hoping for some action, I'm hoping for a call, Don does something a little bit more amazing because he raises me to $10,000 and here we go. Seems like Don has a pretty good hand here on this board. I can't imagine he's going to have pocket kings again because I think he would re-raise my raise uh, after limping in. Can my opponent have pocket tens? That beats me potentially, but I don't think he would play it as passively as you've seen in the first hand where he decided to three bet that one. So that leaves with a couple options. It could be king 10 for top pair. It could be ace king maybe. It could be uh, open-ended. Who knows, but I am not going anywhere and I'm going to bump it up because I've waited all night for an opportunity and I think this is the time to strike and I'm going to three bet to $30,000. I want to get as much money in the middle here right now before the board changes and it gets a little bit scary. There's lots of scary cards, connected cards to the board that could kill my action. And here with my three bet on the flop to $30,000, Don decides to come along for 20K more. We've got a big pot brewing, one of the biggest pots of the night, and he has about $100,000 to play for behind. 
Now, going to the turn, which is the Nine of Hearts. Man, this was one of the action killer cards that I did not want to see. Brings in a backdoor flush draw. Queen Jack obviously gets there as the nuts. And uh, I'm actually not in a very fun spot here at all. Uh, because Queen Jack is obviously the nuts. I lose to that. I think two pair hands like King 10 won't necessarily love this turn card either. But I still have to bet, I think, with bottom sets. And I decided to size a little bit smaller to 22,000 at this point. And then my opponent, Don Snap, goes all in. Snap. Literally count the second. Replay this one more time. I bet 22K and then wait. He announces all in. And I'm about to snap call, actually, to be quite honest with you. But then I decided to think things through. I decided to slow down. I don't need to make rash decisions for a large amounts of money. Let's figure out how much he has, because obviously in person, I don't have the graphics that tell me how much money Don has in his stack. And it's $105,000. I didn't know that at the time, to be honest. I thought he only had like 60K in his stack, but here he is, snap jamming. 5X my bet on the turn on a very scary one. This is not fun at all, sitting with bottom sets. And at this time, I actually think about folding because how is this possible, honestly? How, how can he have a worse hand? I, I, I can't really believe it, to be honest with you. Maybe he has two pair with a flush draw, but hey, I think things over. And I think at the end of the day, I, I don't love my situation at all. I think I have the worst hand a lot of the time, but I'm way too tilted. I'm stuck way too much. YOLO, stick in a call. And we run, decide to run it twice after some deliberation. I wanted to run it once because I'm too tilted, but Don said he ultimately wanted to run it twice. So let's go do that. And then the cards get shown. I boat up on the first river with a board pairing nine, and I just need to fade a king or 10, and five of clubs is going to do it on the second river. And just like that, $275,000 in the middle comes my way. Oh my God, it's been four hours of losing and then one massive hand, one massive cooler, getting very, very lucky to have bottom set versus top two pair. And I hold and I'm out of the hole and everything is feeling good once again. I just think this game of poker is just so, so silly. You can literally lose for four hours straight, then win one hand, then all of a sudden, Everything is fine again, <laughs> and you're in profit. So that's going to be uh, the highlight of today's session. So let me know what you guys think about this hand. Let me know in the comments below. How would you have played this? Would you have done anything differently? Would you have just snap called the turn because uh, you think I knit rolled him somehow with the set? Let me know in the comments below. But we got one more hand to cover, and it's going to be another fun one here with ace nine of clubs in the hijack. I raise it up to 600 bucks. Alex on my left in the cutoff makes the call. Very, very solid player that I haven't actually played many hands with today. Anyways, going to a flop heads up, which comes five, five, three, two hearts. I check it over to him, and he throws out 500 bucks here, kind of debating what I want to do with a raise or call or fold. And I decided ultimately to check raise this one to get a little spicy here. I raise up to $2,000, and my opponent makes the call for $1,500 more. So he's not scared. We're going to go to a turn, which comes the king of diamonds. Action is going to go check, check here. I decided to check this one because I felt like a hand that I was representing would be like pocket eights, nines, tens, jacks, queens, you know, hands like that. And I don't think a king is necessarily a, a fun one to see if I had those holdings. So I said to slow down and he checks this one back. And then we see a river, which is the queen of diamonds. Here, uh, now at this point, sitting with ace high, obviously knowing I don't have the best hand, I certainly have to go for some sort of bluff here with ace high. So uh, let's try to make it look believable. I make it $3,500 into the middle, sitting with ace high in a dream, praying for a fold, and he does not. He raises instead to $11,000, and I don't think I'm gonna do anything with just ace high now. I'm not gonna call when I was bluffing now, either. So get a snap fold, lose a pot. Nice hand to Alex. Well played by him. And that's going to end up the night. I think the stream numbers are a little bit wrong. Uh, it shows that I ended up being positive $40,000. And I think I went positive closer to 60,000. Anyways, we're going to uh, make sure all the numbers are accurate in the outro. But what a ridiculous session this was. Lots of ups and downs. And it's always nice to end on the up. Oh, <laughs>
Wow, what a what a last two hours of the stream. I mean, I, the last time I talked to you guys, I, I had literally zero, zero faith in ever coming out ahead. And it took one hand to put me in the hole, and it took me one hand to get out of it with a massive cooler, bottom set versus top two. Wish I could say there was some skill involved, but it just took took a cooler. What are you gonna do with the set versus top two pair? Whew, what a swing. Um, anyway, shout out to the people who bought action. You, you people on Stake Kings who bought 5% today for full transparency. Um, you guys want some money and it's nice to return people some money that have some faith. Uh, I was in the game for 500,000, out of the game for 559,000. I was down like 70K maybe at the most. And now to walk away up like basically 60k is incredible. So very happy with the results. Uh, pretty tough game overall, to be honest with you, and uh, happy to just survive it. I mean, it, it did take one cooler, but I did survive it. So uh, maybe that's the it for my cash game session stream stuff here for Vegas right now. No promises, there's always stuff to play. So we'll see if there's any more big games to play on live stream, but uh, happy to win, happy to survive, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning along, thanks for following along, thanks for all the support. If you ever wanna buy some more action from me, stakekings.com slash player slash rampage. Sometimes I make you some money, sometimes I don't, but that's part of gambling. So I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, later.